the latest version of uh, discoveries and production and uh, the difference. Um, mm -hmm. The reason that I went, you know, several years ago to, to look at it this way rather than kind of the bottom up of um, uh, resources was that I, I, my feeling is that resources is pretty much a jump number. Um, it, the problem is that uh, countries report their own resources and they will, of course, tend to inflate the amount of resources they think they have. And um, I, I believe it, the resource reporting goes to IEA and 60% uh, of oil producing countries don't bother reporting every year. So the previous year's number just gets rolled over. So uh, that's why I, I've been looking at total discoveries and total production, slightly better numbers than uh, resources. The reserves. And, reserves, yeah, sorry. Um, and so the latest is, uh, you know, about 2,200 gigabarrels of uh, discoveries so far and uh, almost 1,700 gigabarrels of uh, production, leaving us 529 gigabarrels uh, remaining. And this number, the, the remaining amount, was very close to what Rystad had been uh, reporting until this year. And suddenly they went up by 200 gigabarrels. Just who knows where it came from, but anyway. Didn't release the data. <laughs> no. Um, interesting thing was that uh, in 2023 was the lowest uh, in you know a very long time, probably since you know basically the beginning of the oil era of only five billion barrels of uh, w was discovered. And then I read the fine print and said that only 60 percent of that was oil. So only three gigabarrels was discovered wow. last year. And we're using, you know, well over 30 every year. So uh, it's, it's definitely coming down. One other thing, um, this was, so on, on the left here, this one is cumulative, right? This one is the annual, uh, you know, discoveries, the blue bars, and the red is the annual production. And um, if you think about Hubbard's model, his model says that there should be a uh, symmetric bell curve to production. I think that model is no longer anywhere close to being valid. I, I just can't see that we're going to have a uh, symmetric bell curve because we don't have uh, the resource left, but we don't have the reserves left, right? So we keep increasing production by making bigger straws, but there isn't that much left to produce. And so it's really starting to look more like we're going to come up, keep keep going up, and then there's going to be a, a Seneca cliff as we go over the edge here. Um, I think it's going to be a, a very rapid decline once uh, things start going really bad. So. Uh, anyway, this is uh, discovery and production. Um, I had a couple other thoughts I just wanted to share with you guys. Um, one of them, <clears throat> something I've been thinking about for a while now is uh, the energy rates. And you can think of uh, the energy return from a source is the energy rate times time. So it's kind of like a distance equals rate times time thing. And so EROI is analogous to distance, and that energy rate is the, the, how fast you're going. Um, so EROI, I think, is useful, but I don't think it really tells the story. Because if you look at just distance, it'd be like saying, uh, would you rather fly from New York to LA, or would you rather walk? It's the same distance, so it doesn't matter. So I'm saying. <laughs> We ought to look at rate, right? Um, so go ahead, Andre. This reminds me of solar power, right? Because they usually do their EROI based on 20 years. 
but it's the 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 eroy is like three or four so but your energy per year your energy rate would be like a fraction right exactly so just like this example if your eroy is 20 but your lifetime on the solar panel is 20 years you're getting one unit back per year right so you put in one unit you get one back every year after 20 years you've got your 20 back but it, you're getting it back one per year okay so then what i did was i i looked at um the relative energy rate now this is uh, i, I got to explain this a little bit here what i did was i looked at it relative to oil how much time would it take you to get your energy back relative to how fast it comes back for oil okay so it, it's one for oil but then notice this is a log scale over here for gas it's about 10 for all of these over here that we're thinking of as sort of renewable it's hundreds of times longer to get your energy back per unit energy input right and so you, the question is why is it so much slower for all of these guys over here compared to uh fossil fuels right fossil fuels are just you know orders of magnitude faster than anything else and the reason is that like when you build you know for hydro you build this huge dam you've got all the, the turbines you have to put all of that energy in up front and then it lasts for decades you know it could, it could be even a century that a dam is in existence so when you look at the eroi you look at that total eroi you have to divide it by you know many decades um and this is true for all of these guys that it it, it lasts for many years that you have to put the energy in up front for the equipment and there is some maintenance so, so i'm not being entirely fair but most of it is the equipment up front for uh, fossil fuels, when you drill the, the well for the oil, um, there is that energy cost, but the real energy cost for oil is not in drilling the well, it's in transporting it and refining it and you know getting it out to the, the end customer. And that time is very short. It's on the order of weeks or at most a couple of months. So all of your energy in transportation and refining is paid and returned within, you know, just a few weeks. And coal is even better because there's no refining and often coal is transported by train. And so it has a, a very short timeline from the point where you dig it out of the ground to the point where you give it to the customer. So this is why the rate is so high for fossil fuels and then extremely low for everything else and then i took simon's go ahead sorry let me just it just abc had a question i'm i'm wondering if it's related to the first graphic here sure. abc hmm? um no uh, uh, thank you mr peach for showing us these uh, slides i was just curious if these are available from your website or otherwise, because they're very um, elaborate. Um, I haven't put them up yet, but I probably could. Yeah, I was thinking maybe uh, Steve and you could email me your presentations, and then I'll uh, put them up on my website and link them. Sure. On the comments. Okay. Uh, yeah. If I also may ask Steve, uh, the, the presentation that you just showed regarding Bitcoin is that uh, private? Uh, or will it be available publicly somehow? Oh, I'm sorry. The question was: uh, Is would would that uh, that presentation be available publicly? Yeah. Well, would you be willing to send it to me, and then? I'll, oh I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. Would that what I showed here? You know, I'll I'll send that. Uh, okay. I'll, yeah, I'll I'll send that to you. So it's uh, it, it's it's much more. I mean, I've done a lot more research on it. To, you know, but it it's yeah. I'll, I'll definitely send it. No problem. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay, John, go ahead. Um, yeah, so on the, the right side here, this is from Simon's data showing metal mining rates also on a log scale, 
right, and uh, years to produce different metals and, and uh, requirements for energy transition. And so you can see, again, this is orders of magnitude slower than we really need to be able to, to make a transition. And so what we have are an energy and material rate problem that there's just no way we're going to overcome it and, and be able to you know, keep ahead of the decline in fossil fuel. Okay. So for these question. metal mining rates, is this like per ton or what, what are we doing? Uh, um, so, so this is how long the, the uh, metals like, okay, so this first one is copper, right? Mm -hmm. um, so how, you know, we, we need vastly oh, to more produce, copper. Is it, this is for one generation of renewables? That's right. Right. right okay. Right. Okay. Now, now I understand. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So, so we need we need lots of copper to be able to produce the renewables and the equipment that runs on renewable energy, and you know, because we have to convert all of our motors over to electric motors, right? And, and so, in current rates, it would take you know, hundred more than a hundred years to get the copper, and then same thing with all the rest of these guys. It's just phenomenally, you know, out of reach for uh, what we really need. Um, and one last thought, um, just, you know, 